Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Chanel Flores and I am the Aerospace and Defense Industry Director for the Governor's Office of Economic Development. We're excited to have you join us today where we'll be learning about a few different programs that focus on connecting industry with our service members and veterans in order to provide career opportunities for them. The agenda for today will be as follows. First, we will be hearing about the Department of Defense's SkillBridge program, followed by the Department of Workforce Services, and concluding with the chair of the Northern Utah Workforce Development Alliance. We will be taking questions at the end of each presentation, and we ask that you utilize the Q&A button found at the bottom of your screen. Let's get started. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Moira Tyrell. Moira Tyrell is the Education Counselor at Hill Air Force Base. Moira has a bachelor's degree from Brigham Young University, Hawaii, and a master's degree from the University of Pittsburgh. Moira has worked in the education field for over 30 years and has taught high school and college and currently is the education counselor at Hill Air Force Base, where she has been for the last six years. She is a spouse who is an active duty soldier and she is passionate about education and career opportunities for service members. Moira is also joined with Rebecca Delgado, who will be helping to field any questions you may have. And Rebecca is the Education Service Director for Hill Air Force Base. Welcome, and we're excited to have you join us, Moira, and excited to learn more about the SkillBridge program. I'm going to turn the time over to you now. Thank you, um, uh, and good afternoon, everybody. So I'm going to start by giving you an, a broad overview of the SkillBridge program. Um, it's been a well-known fact for a long time that when airmen uh, and other service members as well, remember this is a DOD program, so Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, you're talking about your service members that are leaving the service, and approximately 200,000 service members uh, are leaving the service every year and transitioning to the civilian world. And of those civilian, of those transitioning uh, members, there's always been a high number of uh, those members that are unemployed or homeless. So in 2011, the Veterans Opportunity to Work Act was passed by President Obama. And the DOD program, uh, DOD Skillbridge program, is one of the programs that came about as a result of that act. Hello, I'm, am I still on? Yes. Disappeared. Okay. So, um, if you can hear me, I'm going to just continue. Just to give you some of the numbers, in uh, 2015, 25 million was paid out by the U.S. Army for unemployment for their service, uh, retiring or separating service members. On the Air Force side, it was 63 million in 2015. That number dropped a little bit in 2016, where it was 200 million for the Army and 48 million for the Air Force. In FY18, uh, that number uh, dropped down even further. Uh, it was 188 million paid out in unemployment for the Army and 36 million paid out in unemployment for the Air Force. So as you can see by those numbers, uh, there is a huge gap when service members are leaving the service and transitioning to the civilian world. So that's kind of an overview of why this program uh, is in place today. It's a way to bridge that gap between leaving the service and going on to their next career in the civilian world. So uh, DOD Skill Bridge gives the opportunity to, and now I'm speaking specifically for the Air Force now, gives the opportunity for transitioning service uh, men, uh, airmen who are either retiring or separating, and these can be airmen who are retiring after six years of service or, or, or um, retiring after 20 plus years of service. Uh, so you have young airmen and then you have your veterans who have been in uh, the Air Force for uh, quite a number of years. Um, this gives them the opportunity to go out and do a, 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 a civilian type training to help hopefully prepare them for their next career. When we go out and talk to these airmen that are getting ready to transition out, we, we make it a point to let them know this is your foot in the door, so to speak. This is the way for you to uh, go out and introduce yourself to that company that you want to work for when you leave the Air Force for good. So the idea behind that is for them to look for that place of employment that they want to pursue next after they hang up their uniform for good. Um, there's three main types of programs that fall under the SkillBridge program. 
there's apprenticeships, there's on-the-job training, and then there's also internships. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the, the requirements for each one. Just suffice it to say that they do have different requirements and that is something that is gonna be vetted uh, on the DOD level. Uh, for example, if it's an apprenticeship or an on-the-job training, it has to be approved or registered with the Department of Labor or uh, Veteran Department of Veteran Affairs or the US Department of Education. So those are just some of the requirements for apprenticeships and on-the-job training. Internships are a little different. They're a little easier to be approved. Um, so for the most part, most airmen are pursuing internships uh, with the different companies that they're interested in. Next slide, please. Okay, so if you can see uh, the screen, you'll see some of those uh, names that I just named up. Uh, the approving authorities, those that, these are the different institutions or organizations that approve apprenticeships and over the other on the job training uh, for service members that are doing skill bridge program. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm gonna just go over a little bit of what an airman um, should do when they are um, close to their separation or retirement day. This is airmen who are probably within a year. Uh, one of the requirements is that they have to complete at least 180 days of active duty service and then they are eligible to participate in the skill bridge program once they're with, within 180 days from their date of separation or retirement. So six months before they hang up their uniform for good is when they can go out and do this uh, skill bridge program and while they're still being paid for, uh, by the Air Force. Now, of course, uh, one of the things that we always stress when we talk to airmen is they are still, they're still an airman, they're still active duty Air Force, so they cannot be paid by the company that they're doing the internship with, uh, which is a big plus for the company. They, they get this experienced airman, uh, this experienced service member that they can have for free, you know, free labor for six months. Uh, they can see if the, if the airman is a good fit for the company and the company can see if it's a good fit for him or her. So it's, on that end, it's a plus plus for, for both individuals. Another thing that we also remind um, our airmen when they're looking to go out and do this program is that it's not an automatic approval. Yeah, the approving authority is their commander. For the most part, commanders are approving their airmen to go out and do the internships and do these internships. However, uh, it's with the understanding that it's dependent on unit and mission requirements. Um, at the one of the last uh, slides that I'll go over, I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit about our numbers here at Hill, and I'll kind of discuss what or what was um, what took place when we had some other airmen that were recalled or or their applications were canceled. But the approval to participate in this program is solely up to their commanders. Uh, one of the other things that we also want to remind our airmen is. Look for those companies, the, uh, the companies, uh, whether it can be here in the state of Utah or it can be out of state. Uh, when the program first started, they were only limited to companies that were within a 50 mile radius of the base that they're stationed at. So those who were stationed here at Hill could only look outside 50 miles outside of the base. Now it's open to the whole country. Uh, what that means is airmen that are retiring or separating, of course, want to move back home, wherever home might be. So they can be going out and doing their internships, uh, skill bridge program in any of the states. Overseas is not approved yet, but uh, they can go anywhere in the country. So this program is available to every service member, regardless of where they're stationed. If they're stationed overseas, they can still do it. They just have to come here um, and do it in the states. Um, overseas is not approved yet. It's, it's being discussed, but it hasn't been approved yet at this point. Um, of course, the, the skill bridge program, whether it's an internship, apprenticeship, or on-the-job training, uh, we're looking for programs that have no, no cost or very minimal cost to the airmen. So um, companies that are looking to uh, join this program, uh, that keep that in mind, because that would be one, uh, one of the biggest factor of whether or not the company will be approved as a, a provider for the skill bridge program. Okay, next slide, please. So as a provider, uh, when, you, when you go onto the DOD website where you will go to submit the initial um, application, 
these are the sub these are some of the questions that you should keep in mind if you're interested in being a provider or being a company uh, that offers the skillbridge program to our service members um, some of the questions that you'll be asked is uh, is, is the intern going to replace a uh, employee of the company? If the answer is yes, then that will not be a good fit for this program. The intern should not be replacing a paid employee of your company. Um, they should just be an intern in addition to your staff that's already there. Uh, another big question that we also look for is what is the probability of a job placement for these um, airmen that are doing the internship with your company? Keeping in mind that the key, the, the key goal that we're looking at is for job placement and for this airman to walk into a job, um, that is why we ask that question. What is the probability of, of um, offer, job offer after the, at the conclusion of the internship? We'll also be interested in uh, types of accreditation that you offer, who's, who's actually going to be uh, overseeing the intern. If, you know, we, we, it, the, the airmen can't just be out there making coffee, uh, doing errands. It should be an actual training plan similar to what's offered if they were to go to a institution of higher learning. So it should be an actual training uh, program that you will offer to this uh, intern. Now, we said that they have uh, six months, 180 days from their data separation. That does not necessarily mean that the, the program or your training uh, program has to be the full six months. It can be two months, it can be three months, it can be four months, it can be however long you set it out to be. They are just, that's just their window of eligibility is the 180 days from their date of retirement or separation from the Air Force. Next slide, please. Yeah, and then our final slide, uh, this is specific to Hill, uh, Hill Air Force Base. So for the Air Force, Skillbridge rolled out in late 2018. It, it's been in place for the Army uh, a few years before this, so uh, we've had to uh, look at them and, and kind of use them as a sample example of uh, the program when we started. For us, it was late 2018, and by that, uh, by rollout, I mean that's when we started really briefing about the program, kind of raising awareness of the program, um, and then starting to have those uh, airmen trickle in to ask questions and to start submitting their applications. Uh, it was probably mid-2019 when we really started uh, to have a lot of airmen come in, uh, expressing interest in the program. So to date, we have 105 airmen that have completed the program or are almost complete during the program. Uh, and they are everywhere. They're, they're here in Utah. They're, they're in all other states. Um, in fact, we have a 70-30 kind of ratio right now. 70% have gone out of state, uh, and most of those are people who are just relocating back home, moving back home at the end of their service. And so, of course, they're looking for internships, apprenticeships, and on-the-job training in those city states where they're from, or where, wherever home is for them. Um, we have 74 uh, applications that are pending right now uh, for, the, for, the, for 2020. So those additional 74 and others that are coming in will be going out before the end of this year. We have them in, in all different fields, from education, real estate, law enforcement. We, you know, again, keeping in mind that the idea is for them to find the career, their next career. So they're looking at those specific industries that they are interested in. So we've got a variety of different fields represented already as far as what, our, what and where our airmen are already doing their internships at. So that's just a quick overview of the program and what we have uh, going on today. Oh, actually I mentioned that I was gonna uh, touch a little bit about the recall. Um, we do keep accountability of our airmen, uh, that our commander, their commanders and supervisors uh, are accountable for their airmen. Uh, one of the cases that was recalled was an airman who unfortunately did not report to their um, internship and so, uh, uh, the airman was quickly recalled back by her commander and put back to, to duty. Um, well, we had once canceled due to COVID-19. Um, we don't go into the reasons why, that's all up to the commander if they choose to cancel it. And so other than that, uh, our commanders for the most part here at Hill have been very supportive of the program. They've let their airmen go out and do the, you know, do the, the training, the internships, apprenticeships. We've had some cases where commanders have said, 
uh, the airman wanted to do the whole the full 180 days. I really can't afford to let him go or let her go for six months. However, I can do four months. So we've had cases like that where there's been back and forth, but they've all been approved as, you know, aside from the one that was canceled and, and recalled. So that's the quick overview and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have about, about the program or any additional information that you need from, from us today. So we have a question in the Q&A that is asked, how many of the 105 participants already have two or four year degrees? Do you know that information? Um, I, I haven't been tracking that information, but that would be something that I can look up and, and, and email to whoever's, um, whoever has, you know, whoever posed the question. That is information that we can find. Okay. Airmen. This is Rebecca, but the majority of our airmen that leave that are retiring, um, they have degrees. Um, they're usually the seniors that are walking out, techs, seniors, chiefs, um, they all have degrees. The ones that you might not have degrees are the ones that get out due to a, a medical issue and they're separating and they're the young airmen under the four years. Mm -hmm. But anyone that's been here longer than probably the five years has a degree. And, and one thing with the Air Force, the Air Force has a community college. And uh, for the most part, most airmen um, that are leaving, again, with what Rebecca said, that some of our senior airmen who've been here 10 plus years will most uh, probably have their associate's degree which is what's awarded by the Community College of the Air Force. It's an applied science uh, associate's degree. Hi there, this question from, from me, Guy. Uh, if you're a company and you're interested in providing and getting into this program, how, how would you do that? So you, you would have to go on the DOD SkillBridge website and that's uh, on the slides. I think it's the first page on the slides. Um, on there, if you go to, if you click on the provider tab, it gives you that form that I mentioned that you fill out, and then a DOD uh, person will contact you to complete the application. Excellent, thank you. And those 105 that you showed, were those from Hill or all the Air Force? This is just from Hill. This is just our numbers. Wow, yeah, that's just exciting. Yeah. Uh, that's really and exciting. Just since, Congratulations. Just since, just since late. 2018, early 2019 is the 105. What, what's your experience as for how long does it take if, if someone's in the audience today and they say, wow, I'm really excited about that. They go online and they, gosh, we got a place for that person like this. Is it three months from now? Is it tomorrow? Is it a year? <laughs> what's the normal lead time from when someone applies to when they get? From what we've heard from DOD, it's a couple of months. It's a process that takes a couple of months to from the time they initially uh, express interest through that form on the website to when they're fully vetted to be a provider for SkillBridge. Okay, and then you said 77 applicants, I think. Of those, are those 77 applicants from companies or applicants are airmen? These are just airmen that have pending applications to go do the SkillBridge program. And are there more applicants normally than companies, or does it somehow work itself out so that they're normally balanced? No, because it's 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 open countrywide, so they can they can look here in Utah, they can look anywhere in the country for those internships. So we haven't had that problem yet of having more airmen than companies. Okay, so if you're a company, you need to provide a compelling opportunity for an airman uh, because there's not a shortage of companies. Correct. Correct. And, and that we don't really get involved in that uh, vetting process here in the local level. That's DOD level where they work, you know, they deal mostly with companies to uh, vet them, approve them, and then have them be a provider for SkillBridge. Mm -hmm. uh, Moira, I have another question. Um, will, um, how can we attract the airmen to stay in Utah? This is a question. <laughs> Uh, pay them a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, most, like I, like I mentioned earlier, uh, servicemen, men and women, airmen, when they retire or separate, they're, they're almost always going back home, you know, wherever home is for them. Uh, if, I, if it was me, I would, uh, the only reason I would stay is if it's like a hard to miss opportunity, one of those opportunities that you can't find, you know, home. 
So I would stay in Utah and take that opportunity. Okay. Um, another question is, is the program available to people who have already retired? No, it's not. It's only for transitioning members that are still active duty and only within their 180 days before retirement or separation. Another okay. question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Guy. Um, a question about um, if there's 77 applicants in the process at Hill, um, is there a way we could partner with you? So this Northern Utah Workforce Development Alliance, we, we want to promote that's the last question. We want these folks to stay. We have a real need for this talent that comes from, from your Air Force. Can we work with you to create like a, a workshop or a symposium or an open house where we can get a number of companies that have applied and have a like, like a job fair or kind of like when you join a club at college your first day, there all the people say, come work for us. Is that something that's done at Hill where we can organize something like that? Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily our office, but um, if companies are interested and do get approved by DOD, we do, we can generate a list of local companies that are available for airmen to look at first before they look outside of Utah. So, um, you know, but then they, they, they have to be approved by DOD first, vetted and approved by DOD first, and then we can have a list of local companies that have internships available and we'll give that out to the airmen when they come in looking for internship uh, opportunities. Local. Yeah, local opportunities. Okay, we got another question. Um, are National Guard members allowed to participate? Not at this time. Uh, as far as we're aware, it's only for active duty members. So we do have National Guard members who are AGR, uh, active duty reserves. They are able, they are uh, eligible for the program but your traditional National Guard and Reservists are not. Okay, that's all I'm seeing for now. Perfect. Well, now we're gonna turn over the time to uh, Eden Johnson, who is the Workforce Development Specialist for the Utah Department of Workforce Services. Eden Johnson has been serving the business and workforce community with the Utah Department of Workforce Services for over 20 years. During her career, she has administered various state and federal programs and has been involved in business development organizations at the state and local level. Eden is committed to increasing workforce education and training opportunities to contribute to the success of Utah's business. Eden, it's a pleasure to have you here with us and we're looking forward to hear more about some of the programs that you oversee. Thank you so much. I do have a few slides. I'm going to go ahead and pull those up. That was an excellent presentation. I was uh, appreciate that. And I am grateful for the opportunity to spend just a few uh, minutes with you today. Um, as Chanel said, my name is Eden Johnson. I am a workforce development specialist with the Department of Workforce Services. And I serve on a team of workforce development specialists supporting employers, education partners, and economic development partners all across the state of Utah. I have had the privilege of working for the Department of Workforce Services and the state of Utah for over 20 years, mainly in training and development and business services. And I have seen many uh, economic cycles ebb and flow, but I have never seen circumstances such as we are currently experiencing in regard to the workforce and the economy. So at the Department of Workforce Services, in our workforce development, um, Division, our mission is to strengthen Utah's communities by supporting the economic stability and quality of our workforce. And I just want to touch on a few resources that are available uh, to you as employers today. I want to talk about our online portal, which is our statewide labor exchange system to jobs.utah.gov, some business development and partnership opportunities, uh, and some economic data. Our online portal is the largest um, database 
of labor exchange system in Utah has the largest pool of candidates. You can see the number there for uh, the current civilian Utah labor force. And that was from our employment summary that was just released a few days ago. There are over 327,000 job seekers actively seeking work and over 7,800 of those individuals are veterans who are currently registered in the Department of Workforce Services database. In order to be considered an active job seeker, an individual has to have a profile created with the Department of Workforce Services and be logging in and actively participating in a job search activity in the last 30 days. So that is a way that we maintain a fresh uh, applicant pool and uh, maintain current candidates in our labor exchange system. If an individual is not actively participating in job seeking activities after 30 days, they do do go into an inactive status until they are, are ready to look for work again. When jobs are posted through the online portal, a seeker matching feature is used to automatically return uh, job matches to uh, candidates who are paired with the positions. And I wanna make sure that you're aware that if you are proactive and you are looking through these candidate matches that are returned, there is the list that comes up first are all veteran candidates. So we encourage you to be proactive, to use those lists, to go through, look at those individual veteran profiles and see where those candidates might be a fit in your organization. You're also returned a second list of candidates, which is a list of general job seekers from the general public, which is also available to you. We have some other partner services, such as recruitment activities, hiring events, job fairs. I want to mention just two that are coming up in the next month are statewide virtual job fairs. We have one on June 30th and one on July 30th. We kicked off our first virtual statewide job fair in April and we had over 800 attendees. And we anticipate that we will have even additional um, candidates attending the June and July events. In regards to our business development and partnerships, uh, we are very pleased to partner with the Airman Readiness Center at Hill Air Force Base to coordinate employers for monthly employer panels and quarterly job fairs for the Transition Assistance Program or the TAP program. The TAP program is administered by DOD and they provide many resources to individuals who are preparing to transition out of military service into civilian employment. And so if you are not familiar with the TAP program, we would be happy to share more information about if you want to participate as um, an employer on one of those panels or job fair, we may be able to assist you with that opportunity. We also partner with the Military Spouses Professional Network and we have hosted events for them at local Department of Workforce Services Employment Centers, and we have supported some of their virtual presentations as well. We also work closely with education and training partners on statewide uh, workforce initiatives. Many of these are developed through the Governor's Office of Economic Development, such as the Talent Ready Utah, Utah Works, uh, the Utah Rural Jobs Initiatives, and DWS is often the boots on the ground supporting these initiatives, especially when connections are needed with individual job seekers or training opportunities. Department of Workforce Services also publishes a lot of very valuable economic data, and you have access to local, state, and national interactive data online. We are also the direct source for monthly employment situation reports and we publish occupational wage data, projections, demographics, really a plethora of data and information is available to you to help with business and hiring decisions. And if you are not able to readily find the information that you're seeking on our website, please reach out and let us know. We do have a team of, uh, through our workforce resource, our workforce resource and analysis, and they are amazing. There is a regional economist assigned to each area in the state that can provide um, individual assistance to you. 
We also have a dedicated veterans employment services team, and we do provide priority of service for veterans and spouses. So I wanna to touch on the ACE program, the Utah Patriot Partnership Program, and also the connections um, that we help with to assist for the VRNE program. The ACE program is accelerated credentialing to employment, and it helps veterans take their military experience and employ them in new civilian careers. I wanna make sure that you're aware that the ACE program can fund short-term training opportunities. So if you have some positions that would be well-suited for those with military experience, or if those individuals um, could be qualified for your positions through some short-term skill enhancement and training, we want to know about those opportunities so we can get connected with our ACE specialists and they can assist with referrals to your organizations. The Utah Patriot Partnership Program is a program that has uh, been available for several years, and it is a partnership with employers who pledge to consider hiring qualified veteran candidates when they have openings. And we are excited to uh, be rolling out some program enhancements for our Utah Patriot Partnership Program. We are going to be offering some additional support and ongoing engagement with our UPP employers. So if you have already pledged and you are a UPP employer, thank you so much for your support of veteran candidates. If you have not um, pledged support already or haven't been aware of our Utah Patriot Partner Program, we encourage you to connect with us and consider pledging as a UPP employer. It's a great opportunity to show your support to those who have served us, and you know that the veteran candidates um, that may be referred to your organization will be of the highest caliber and have excellent skills and leadership experience. So if you are a Utah Patriot partner already, uh, look forward to some enhancements in the coming year and meeting Lisa Duckworth. She is new to our veterans uh, team and I will be providing her information in just a moment. And if, again, if you're not a UT, UPP employer, please uh, consider pledging your support. We also assist with connections uh, to the Veterans Administration for the Vocational Readiness and Employment, the VR&E program. And it is an excellent program that provides opportunities for veterans and service members to get personalized counseling and support to help guide their career paths, to ensure the most effective use of their VA benefits, and to help achieve their career and employment goals. As you can see, we do have a very comprehensive uh, network and team supporting your business. So wherever you are doing business in Utah, you do have a team of workforce de development professionals for recruitment and hiring support. You can see that our network includes in each area a director, an economist, workforce development specialists, uh, such as myself, and we can help with um, targeted applicant searches for veterans, we can help develop local recruitment strategies and assist with connections to various hiring events, on-site recruitments, and other um, employment-related activities. At each of our employment centers across the state, we have veterans representatives and other staff and employment counselors who are working one-on-one -on -one with veterans, providing career uh, coaching and counseling services, and so through this whole network of staff, you can see that we have a very strong team to push out your opportunities and help you connect with our veteran network. I also want to uh, mention that we do have an employer initiatives manager, Lance Soph, who is uh, very willing to assist employers and wants to learn about any specific needs you may have for your company. And also here is Lisa's contact information. She is a local veteran employment representative. And again, if uh, you haven't met her already and you are a UPP employer, you will probably uh, have that opportunity in the coming year. We have literally gone from record low unemployment to record high unemployment in a matter of weeks. And we're experiencing a churn in the labor force that I haven't seen for many, many years. 
So this is a great time to engage with Department of Workforce Services and help us work together on strategies to meet your workforce needs. Again, I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, and if there's no questions uh, for Eden, does anybody have any questions? Uh, there is one question uh, that went back to Guy, if he could answer that, but then is also, uh, I haven't seen any yet for Eden. We'll watch for that. Um, sorry, Frank, I'm not sure I understood your question very well. Um, do you mind restating your question? Frank Majana? Uh, he's probably still on mute, or I don't know if he, can they talk or does he have to type no, the question? No, he would have to type in his question. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. Um, uh, he asked if Weber State would be interested in internships, and I'm not sure what he meant by that. So I apologize, Frank. Uh, I'm with, uh, you said, would they have an interest in doing internships for veterans? The they, I guess, is the question, is the word. I don't know who you mean by they. Uh, if you could re-ask another question, that would be helpful. So, Eden, thanks for your... Thanks for that. Uh, hey, Guy? Yeah. That question from Weber State, yes, they can absolutely be a, a provider for the program. We, we do okay. have a few that have done it with, well, not a few, a couple, with the University of Utah. So, yes, institutions of higher learning can be... A, a provider company for a uh, skill bridge. Wow, all right, That's, that sounds great for me. I could use some help. Uh, I got, I'm way behind in, in all my things to do. Uh, Eden, thank you for your great presentation. It sounds like Ms. Duckworth is, if you have any question related to vets, call Ms. Duckworth and she can be the point of contact through all of those resources you have, is that right? Yes, she can assist any employers statewide in addition to the workforce development specialists in the local areas. So we will work together as a team to support those needs. I think that's always good when people, I mean, with the internet age sometime, this is why I was hoping we could have this call today is a lot of times it's self-explanatory on a website, but uh, it's sometimes you just want to talk to someone. So I, I think what you and Maura have done today is at least for me anyway, taking a lot of anxiety out of it. And I feel comfortable that there's someone to talk to if I have any questions. So thank you for that. And thank I you. haven't heard from Frank, uh, so I'm not sure we answered his question. Sorry, Frank. Well, and Guy, I think it's, you know, my pleasure actually since it's your turn uh, to turn the time over to you. Uh, so this is Guy Latender. He is the Director of Economic Development for Weber State University. Guy has over 25 years in private industry experience where he started out as an entry-level mechanical engineer and worked his way up to CEO, COO at a high, par high power electronics company. Currently, Guy is enjoying this new challenge as a business development officer for Northern Utah, and we are so grateful to have you with us today. And I love working with you and have had the pleasure of working with you for the last year. So thank you, Guy. I'll turn the time over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Chanel, for that introduction. Hey, Guy, uh, he did, yeah. uh, Frank went, came back on here and did clarify that question. Um, uh, if you can see it in the, cat, in the chat, he says, I am a career service liaison for the veterans office. What I'm trying to find out is if there are opportunities for veterans at, at Utah, I mean at Weber State University. Um, I will follow up with that. Uh, that'll be my action. And um, I think I know how to get a hold of Frank and we will do that. I think that's a, a good question. I was just thinking of that myself. So thank you for that question, Frank. So as, as many of us maybe heard at the beginning of this conversation, the, a regional group of us have formed an alliance to talk about how to improve workforce development in Northern Utah. And yes, while unfortunately the unemployment rate is very high in Utah, if you look at it from an industry or a subcategory industry basis, uh, it's still incredibly low for the industries that bring money into Northern Utah. And in fact, uh, we had a presentation on Tuesday about the ground-based strategic deterrent program and the Air Logistics Center at Hill. 
and the numbers of jobs that are going to be created total 8,000 over the next five years from just those two programs. And that's a, and then right now, if you went to the Northrop Grumman website, you could see that their GBSD program posted today is 477 jobs for Roy, Utah. So um, a lot of our unemployment now, as you can imagine, is related to food service, entertainment, and unfortunately all those folks got hit pretty hard. But we can't take a food service worker and turning him into an aircraft technician or a high tech maintenance or manufacturing a technician in, a, in two or three weeks or even six months in, or a year in some cases. So we really need to focus on optimizing the talent that we have a chance to. As well as that, we've learned that a lot of talent that we need in Northern Utah are mid-career jobs, meaning folks with 10, 20 years of experience. And the, we, in Weber State, uh, Davis Technology, and other workforce development uh, institutions can't graduate people or give them a certificate that says they have 20 years experience. That's something you have to do. And because the unemployment rate in those occupations is so low, we recognize we have to bring talent in from out of state. And so what we've done as a group in working with the Northern Utah Economic Alliance, uh, we formed a, a website resource. And on this tab here, it says the Northern Utah Economic dot nuea.org i'm sorry uh, if you go to this website there's a living here tab if you click on that it's uh, a whole section that you can send to uh, people that you're thinking of recruiting uh, from out of state and, and the goal with this is to show people what it's like to live in utah so we have uh, a sub page for educational uh, resources um, uh, why is that not working? Uh, rec sports and recreation, it talks about the ski resorts, uh, the parks that are there, professional basketball and sporting teams that you can see, um, biking, oops, bike. If, if anyone didn't get sick after that, I'm sorry. Uh, parks and trailheads, things like that. Arts and culture. I don't know why this picture is not showing up here, but it talks about all the, the arts opportunities, the universities, the churches and religious activities and further contact. Oh, here's the picture, I'm sorry. But this resource was developed so that when you're attracting talent from out of state, uh, you can give them this, uh, this URL in your communication to them. And it's a resource that helps them uh, look at moving here. One of the resources that could be interesting is housing market. A lot of talent that we're looking for in Northern Utah is likely coming from an area that housing is much more expensive. And then they have pictures and costs of homes that folks might be interested. So they get a feel before they come here what it's like to live here, cost of living index, things like that. So this is a new resource that's being developed. We wanna uh, improve it more over time, add some video content that we wanna add to that that shows people uh, experiencing life in Northern Utah. And so this is for you uh, to share with your prospective uh, employees. Uh, here's the video library. There's some I won't show the videos here, but you're welcome to go look at them. There's some great videos on uh, Layton and Ogden. And we'll, as I mentioned, we'll add some other content in the future. That's all I have on this. Are there any questions for me? not seeing any at this time guy that means i did an excellent job perfect well i just want to thank you for your time today for all of our panelists uh guy eden moira and rebecca thank you again for taking the time to 
you know, present and share these different opportunities with us. Um, it's a pleasure to have you guys here and have the resources that we need for our veterans and our service members and for our, our industry partners, you know, who are trying to hire and need to fill those gaps within their workforce. So very excited about some of these different initiatives and uh, all of this will be uh, available. So the entire presentation will be available on either our Facebook page, which is uh, the Governor's Office of Economic Development's Facebook page, or our YouTube page. And so you can go back. Um, I know Moira's slides were fantastic. If you need uh, the, you know, kind of to figure out if your organization is able to apply for the SkillBridge program and, and some of those steps within that. So again, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, it was a pleasure and uh, we look forward to being in touch with all of you guys soon. Thank you, uh, have a great day. Thank you.